Ah. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Cyril, and today I'm going to be talking about Asterisk and Python. Um, just to see the audience, uh, how many of you know what Asterisk is? Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> how many of you have used it in an office or at home? Okay, that's a lot less. Okay, so. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to start by introducing Asterisk, um, basically what, uh, what it can do, when, when it can be used, and what people usually do with it, and how it's, uh, how it's organized and how it's configured also. And then I'm going to explain how I've been using Python uh, to, to make Asterisk easier and more effective. Uh, before I start, are there, are there any questions? No? Okay. <sighs> okay, this is a, um, a quote from the from Asterisk website. It describes what, what Asterisk is. It's an open source PBX telephony engine and telephony applications toolkit, which means that uh, you can interconnect uh, different voice networks with it. Uh, you can also build uh, telephony applications with it. There's a lot of functionalities that you can use. And it's, it's open source, of course, so that means you're, you're free to do whatever you want with it. And that's, um, that's really a key element in, uh, in a serious development because most, uh, most telephony systems are proprietary and very limited and they cost a lot. Oh. Okay, um, so what you can do with it, you can build um, a communication network for, say, your internal office. You can have an Asterisk server and you can have uh, VoIP phones for everyone. And that way you can, you can have extensions inside your office so you, that you can call uh, each other using uh, using the internal network instead of uh, going through uh, I don't know uh, the usual telephony network because that would cost a lot and this uh, this kind of uh, networks can be built inside the same building and because asterisk is uh, is VoIP uh, that means you can you can also build this kind of network be between locations uh, you can have two offices very far away uh, one in, I don't know, one in France and one in Canada. And that means you can make calls between your two offices without going through the telephony network, which means you don't have to actually pay anything for, for those calls. Uh, you can do the same, I guess, with family members or friends. Uh, it's pretty much the same as Skype, I think. Um, you can also use it to to build and host IVRs, which is uh, interactive voice uh, response. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, IVRs are usually um, there. I think most often it's used for uh, customer services. Uh, when you call somewhere and it says uh, if you're calling for a problem about uh, your internet access, press one, or to, to talk to anyone, you press zero. Uh, that's what IVRs are, and that's something that's very easy to do with Asterisk. And yeah, also uh, I mentioned it, but you, there are many. <laughs> That's, uh, that's a very good point because um, Asterisk is very flexible. So this means that if you have anything you want to do that's, uh, I don't know, anything you want to, to use, in fact, to talk to anyone, anywhere, you can build it with Asterisk. And most of the time, you don't, you don't even need to have a phone line to, to use it. You can just use use the internet to, to make calls to anyone. Of course, everyone has to have the, the proper equipment because you cannot call from the internet to a phone, but uh, if you have some time and, I guess, the, the money, you can, you can do it if you're willing to, to stop paying bail. <laughs> uh, the structure of, um, of Asterisk. Uh, it's actually very, uh, very interesting because it uses modules for, for 
really everything. Um, there's there's a core that loads these modules, but it doesn't do much because Asterisk will load modules for uh, every channel types. Um, channel types are um, the equivalent of the um, of the lines, I guess. Uh, for example, Zap is. Uh, is the name for, for traditional telephony. If you have um, like um, a standard telephone line or a T1, uh, that's going to be called a ZAP channel. And SIP is a virtual line kind of thing through the internet uh, or on a local network. Um, it will also load modules for, for the codecs you, you can use uh, because SIP or VoIP doesn't necessarily imply a specific codec. You can use any one you want uh, based on the on the bandwidth that you have and the sound quality that you want. Uh, you can choose. Can we ask questions? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Is fax a codec? Uh, fax, um, I'm not sure. I, I haven't worked a lot with faxes, but. I know that it's a, it's a specific application, but uh, I think it doesn't use a codec. I think it's a, a well, not an audio codec. I think it's a, some kind of encoding, but it doesn't. I don't think there's a codec for that. It's, it doesn't encode audio, so I don't think so. Sorry. It doesn't encode a, an audio stream, so I don't think it's a codec for, for faxes. But a service can handle faxes as well. Uh, if you want. And um, the applications are, yeah, sure. Before we move on, ask yeah. us to handle faxes as well. Yeah. Okay. But it's not a codec. No, it's not a codec, but it's some kind of application that uses telephone lines, so uh, Asterisk can do it. Okay. <laughs> mm. uh, there's also modules for, for applications. Um, applications are um, not per se applications. They are more like instructions that you can um, you can use to to tell Asterisk what you want to do with a certain call. Uh, for example, dial is just that. It just dials. You can you can specify uh, any destination you want. Uh, you have to specify the channel type. And if, for example, someone calls on a certain number and you want it to transfer somewhere else, you use the dial command. And it's going to 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 connect the calls uh, between locations. Uh, Meet me is a, uh, it's a, it's actually a conference. So if you want to if you want everyone who calls on a, on a specific number, uh, you assign a Meet me to this number, and that way everyone who calls the number is going to talk to each other. So that's how it's done. And so yeah, that's modules for for all applications that you can use. And there are also modules for resources. Um, I don't really use that, but uh, if you want, you can define a, a database source, um, which means that Asterisk, when, when uh, it will require an access to a, to a database, if you haven't specified anyone for the, for the specific module, uh, it's going to load uh, to see what resources are available and if there's a, a database module, uh, um, a database resource, uh, it's going to use this one uh, by default. Uh, Asterisk uses uh, the database uh, mostly for CDR, uh, which is called uh, call detail record. Uh, it's just a list of every call that's going through your server. Um, so yeah, of course, uh, each module is co configured, configured independently. Um, that's that's implied because everything is modular, but uh, it means also that there are a lot of configuration files for, for Asterisk. I think on a standard installation of, uh, of Asterisk, you have like 30, 40 uh, config configuration files to, to edit. No, you don't have to edit all of them, but it still makes a lot because you, you have to find out which one does what, and it can be messy. Uh, I'll save that. Yeah, for example, sip.conf, um, 
it allows you to configure as well uh, what the, the server, uh, the SIP server that Asterisk will run, uh, on what address and port to bind, and what codecs are allowed. But it will also configure the SIP clients. Uh, for example, the, the SIP phones you have in your office, you have to, to define all your users and Usually it's users for, for phones because uh, there's a difference between users and peers. Users can, mm, yeah, users can place and receive calls and that's, that's it. And peers can do a bit more, I'm not quite, quite sure what, but they can transfer calls between peers, I think. So yeah, that's it. And you have uh, one configuration file and you have to, to define uh, to define two different kind of things in them, so it's, uh, it can be confusing at the beginning. Uh, the most important file is uh, actually extens extensions.conf. Uh, it defines what to do with every call, depending on the context, because uh, uh, the, the, the content of uh, extensions.conf is referred to as the dial plan, and that's where you define uh, the context. If you, uh, every call by default goes in a, in a context called default, and if you want, um, for example, your SIP clients to, to go somewhere else to, to dial out or something, you can define another context called outgoing, and this context will say, uh, just dial out, and uh, you can, in the default context, you can have uh, what you want to do for every incoming call, for example, play a, play a menu to, to say press zero to, to reach the, the customer support, or uh, if you know the, the extension you're trying to reach, dial it now, you can define this in there. Uh, what yeah. is SIP? SIP, uh, it's a protocol for, for VoIP telephony. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Uh, is that okay? Station initiation protocol. Session initiate. Okay. Um, it's a protocol you can use between uh, between clients and servers uh, on the internet to to send voice. Yeah, this is for for a very simple example of um, of a, a, a context in a in extensions.conf, which which means everyone who calls um, on this uh, specific number. You're going to answer the call, play back uh, this sound file. It's a, it's a stupid sound file that's in, included with Asterisk. It's just a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know, I like to use it. So. Um, and then you hang up. So that's how you define uh, what to do with a, with a call in, uh, in exten extensions.conf. Uh, it's always the, the same format. Um, you have to define which extension, the priority, it has to be ordered. Um, you can use N uh, as next one if you don't want to count or change everything, and the application you want to run at that priority. Um, so that's how you have to, um, to configure all your, all your numbers, all your extensions, uh, if you have m many numbers that come in to your, to your server, you have to define uh, all the instructions for, for all your numbers. Uh, or if you want, you can do the same for all of them, but that's not really necessary. Um, Aster's gateway interface, uh, usually called uh, AGI. It allows for, for external IVR programming. Uh, I say external because uh, you, can, you can program IVRs uh, directly into the dial plan, but it's very complicated. It's not very, uh, I don't know, it's, it's too complex because you have to, um, uh, okay. Uh, you have to use uh, go-tos in, in your dial plan to define uh, if someone press one, go to uh, another priority, 
which means that all your priorities have to be numbered. You cannot use N, and that's uh, very difficult to maintain or to update. It's it's very difficult. So with AGIs, it's actually you can um, you can program um, using any language you want, uh, and Asterisk will. Um, will execute the program and communicate with your program uh, by standard input and output, uh, which means it's very easy programming, and that's what allows you to use any kind of language that you want. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. So if you want to, to stream a file or get uh, a channel variable, you just print the command that you want to, to execute, and then uh, Asterisk will write back the, the command result if, uh, if it failed, if it worked, or the value of the, the variable that you, that you asked for. Um, yeah, that's an, uh, an example uh, with the monkeys again. Uh, if you say get data, uh, that means uh, uh, that's uh, the Asterisk console uh, added this, but that means uh, the AGI printed this line. Uh, get data means uh, allow the user to, to input a few numbers. Uh, the input is interrupted uh, if one of these touches uh, buttons is pressed. Uh, this specifies a timeout of uh, five seconds. It's in milliseconds, and this uh, specifies the length, uh, the maximum length of the input. So. With this command, uh, Asterisk is going to stream this file and wait for, for some input for five seconds. And if one of these buttons is pressed, it's going to end. And here we can see the result was 57. And, and post doesn't do anything. It's just uh, the position uh, in the sound file where the input stopped. So it's, it's not very useful. It can be useful if you want to know if someone heard the message completely or not. But uh, so that's what you have to um, to work with if you uh, if you want to to build AGIs. Uh, it's very easy to to use. Uh, usually, yeah. Usually, Asterisk is used with Perl and PostgreSQL. I don't really know why, but. I thought I should mention it because there's a lot of resources for, for Perl and PostgreSQL uh, with Asterisk. Uh, for example, if you want to use a MySQL uh, database, you have to go through ODBC to set up the connection. Uh, but if you want to use PostgreSQL, there's a configuration file directly built in. So that's it. Uh, the next part is going to be about Python. Uh, does anyone have any questions on the, the first part? Um, uh, that depends. Um, I, um, it depends on the, the kind of lines you have. If you have uh, if you have a T1 or many T1s or just a single line, but um, we had we used to have a dual core. Uh, a dual core uh, server for the gate. Uh, there was, uh, I think, 40 ones on it, and that means uh, each T1 is the equivalent of 23 uh, phone lines. So that's uh, uh, 102, I think. Uh, no. Anyways, uh, four times 23. Four times 23. Yeah. Uh, 92. 92. 92. Okay. So that's uh, 92 phone lines, and uh, the server we had was uh, was capable of handling all those calls at the same time. Uh, I don't think we, we ever went to 92 calls, but maybe 80, 70, 80 calls at the same time. Um, yeah, Asterisk doesn't use uh, a lot of resources. It's no, it's uh, you don't need a big big server to. Excuse me. Uh, that depends on what you want to do, but usually I think uh, any entry line server like uh, Core Duo uh, with like one gig of RAM is going to be enough. Uh, it's just if you want to have uh, to have T1s, you need uh, you need special cards for for it. 
Um, but that's, that's really all you need. Just to add on, uh, probably the majority of the discount long distance carriers will find you using asterisk servers to carry all of their traffic across continents and stuff. Really, what's going to limit you more is not so much your call capacity, but how much processing you're doing on board. So if you're doing transcoding from one code, audio codec to another, that takes up more, a lot more capacity than just switching the calls. Same thing if you're doing meet conferencing. And there's a lot of DSP activity right, being done in software to do these conference calls. So you typically want a, a separate conference server for that kind of stuff. Yeah, but usually the DSP processing is done on the on the uh, on the telephonic card that you have. If you have a card. Yeah, if you have one. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, any more? Yeah. You need the special hardware to connect the phones. Um, to connect the phones. The, uh, the, uh, the, the computer. Um, if you use VoIP phones, you don't need anything, but if you want to use uh, traditional analog phones, you need a, a small adapter, it's called an uh, uh, ATA. Uh, it's a small box, you plug in your, your, your phone, and you plug in the network in it, and you just have to configure it, and it just works. It doesn't cost a lot, I think uh, $70 for, for one box. Yeah. What did IVR stand for? Uh, interactive voice response. Uh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So? so how hard is it to set one of these things up? Excuse me? Difficult to set um, Well, one, once you're, you're familiar with Asterisk, uh, it's very fast, but uh, the, uh, you have to learn a lot, uh, a lot of... Uh, well, actually, when I started, there was already um, a complete environment. Uh, it took me, I think, uh, four months to be really comfortable with it. And then I started to redo everything using Python, actually. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, and it was like four months and I worked with it every day. So it's pretty hard at the beginning, <laughs> yeah. Excuse me? Does anybody make admin tools for uh, Actually, I'm going to talk about this. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, wait. Um, there's actually not. There are a few, but they don't work very well. And the, the framework that I built, I actually um, took care of this problem because, well, I use a, a database for, for pretty much everything. So that's, that makes it easier to, 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 to manage and to, to change. Two more? Okay. Okay, so where does it come in? First of all, AGIs, of course, because it's a programming language and we need something to do with it. Uh, as I said, I also use it for the configuration of my servers. Um, Actually, not as the configuration, but as the uh, uh, the middle part in the in the configuration. It's uh, it's in between. There's the database uh, holds all the configuration, and Python uh, uh, Python translates the the configuration, and of course debugging because um, no, I'm gonna I tell tell it later. Uh, there are a few existing frameworks. Uh, FATS is uh, actually I don't really know because it's the one I hear most about. But everything is in Russian, so I <laughs> I don't know lots about it. But uh, I think it's pretty much the same as StarPy. Uh, StarPy uses a lot uh, a lot of the um, twisted modules, um, but it's it's very complex. Uh, I think it doesn't really simplify the, the use of asterisk. Uh, I think it, it complexifies, is that a word? Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's a complique. Uh, yeah, so it, it, and it's, it's also kind of restri restrictive because it, it um, uh, oh, what's the word? Uh, presuppose. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. It, pres it presupposes, uh, it makes assumptions. That's what I was looking for. It makes assumptions about your, your environment and what you're going to be using it for. So it's, um, it's not very friendly to use. Uh, the one that uh, I liked actually was Pyst. Um, it's a very simple, uh, actually it used to be, but now it's far more complex. But uh, it's a I think it's just two or three classes uh, that handle the, the exceptions, the interaction with asterisk. Uh, it actually, the, the main uh, goal of Pyst is to define a complete AGI class. Um, so I think this can be useful if, uh, if you want a, a, a big documentation about the programmation or if you don't want people to really learn the documentation of Asterisk. For example, how does get data works? So it tries to define a method for every application you can have in an, in an AG, AGI. And so I didn't quite like this for that because it was I don't know, it was too much. If you, if you know the asterisk command, you don't need to know another one. So I didn't use it also. But it's, if you want to start with something, uh, I think it's a good idea. So yeah, what we really need, if you want to be using Python with, a, with asterisk, uh, is just to define an AGI class that needs only two methods, uh, actually more, but in the bigger scheme of things. Uh, just the initialization, just read the environment that Asterisk gives it, um, because when Asterisk uh, executes uh, an AGI, uh, it sends a lot of variables, for example, what number was dialed, what, what's the color ID, and what's the unique ID of the call, and uh, many information like that, and execute, which will essentially just send uh, an instruction to asterisk and return the, re the result. So that's, that's really all you need if you want to be programming uh, AGIs uh, with Python. Uh, maybe a log and a, a database class, but these are not really necessary if you, excuse me, if you want to build very simple applications. And the thing is, uh, extensions are yeah, all the same because it's always about dialing somewhere else or, or executing an, uh, an AGI. I mean, one or more, it depends. Uh, but usually those are the two ac actions that uh, any extension will do. Uh, there are not many cases where, where you need to do something else because um, well, if you, if you can execute an AGI, that means that you can have a menu, you can uh, decide to transfer someone to somewhere else. And so this way it's very easy to, um, to, um, uh, to, to simplify actually the, the configuration. Um, yeah, extensions, I'm, I mentioned it already. Yeah, this file, uh, the one I talked about earlier that defines what you, what you want to do with every call, um, you, you have to define all, ex, uh, all extensions in it and every single instructions that you want to, to have. So it can become uh, very heavy. It can become one big file that you cannot understand anymore. And you have to be very careful when you edit it because uh, if you have a syntax error in it, uh, asterisk will not work at all, and uh, that can be dangerous. Uh, so, yeah, it will become one big mess. So that's, um, uh, if you want to keep things really simple, you define two contexts, one that defines the, what to do with the incoming calls and what that defines uh, the outgoing calls. Yeah? I just want to know when you say asterisk doesn't work at all, like, does it give nice exceptions or does it just... Yeah, it gives exceptions, but uh, actually when you, when you edit the, uh, the configuration file, you have to go in the asterisk console and then type reload, and it reloads all modules and all configuration. So there's like 400 lines going through, so if you, if you don't if you don't look at each and every line, you might not see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know, it can be sensitive to work with. So, 
these two contexts uh, define what to do with incoming and outgoing calls. Um, the underscore x dot instead of the uh, extension means uh, any extension uh, that starts with a number. So that way every call I get in my, uh, in my incoming context will go to this AGI and every call I try to make uh, from a phone or from, or from a, another AGI uh, will be dialed like this. Um, that's the, the syntax to, to get variables in the, in the die plan for asterisk. And actually, well, what can be confusing is when you try to dial a curl, it will go in the die plan and look for the number you're trying to dial. So that's why you have to define extensions like this for, for outgoing calls, because otherwise, uh, I don't know, you have to enter all the numbers you want to dial in your configuration file, and uh, that's just stupid. Um, so in the AGI that handles uh, all the incoming calls, you ju just have to get the ex extension that was dialed. Uh, you look it up in the database and do what it says in the database. And that's all. Uh, that's really all it needs to do because there are only just a few actions you can in your database, you can specify that you want this extension to execute another, uh, another AGI, or you can specify it to dial somewhere else. Or you can have a few, um, a few sections or a few categories of, uh, of, of extensions in it. And yeah, the consequences of uh, this change in, uh, in Asterisk configuration uh, means that modifications are safe and easy because you don't have to edit the uh, extensions.conf anymore. You don't have to reload the configuration file, uh, the configuration. And any change you make that will cause an error will cause the error just for the number that you edited. So this uh, is a very easy way to, uh, to have a a more uh, robust asterisk uh, configuration. And uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, and that's what I, I was uh, talking about uh, before. Uh, this way you can design uh, complete management interface with it because all your configuration is in a database. So this means you can have a few web pages that can uh, that you can use to, to edit everything that uh, your server does. So that's pretty cool. Um, OK, the, this section is about debugging, because Python plays a, a very big uh, very big role in my, uh, in my debugging. Uh, for syntax errors, uh, since it won't compile, uh, I recommend using PyChecker or PyLint, uh, because the, the debugging uh, methods I have in place uh, require the, 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 the Python script to, to compile properly and execute. So, uh, yeah, the inconvenience in the, for the runtime exceptions, for example, uh, divide by zero or I don't know, anything, uh, a broken pipe or something. Uh, since Asterisk runs uh, the AGIs, uh, you don't necessarily have a log, except if you have uh, written a log class to write something. But you don't, you will not have access to, uh, to the standard error. So that means you cannot see if, uh, if, if an AGI just crashes uh, in, uh, in execution, you'll just have someone calling customer service saying, hey, the line dropped. I don't know. So that's a very big problem, because if, uh, if you don't know when, uh, when an AGI re will crash, uh, you can't really patch it and do anything. So uh, the easy solution I had was uh, have all the, um, the core of my, of my AGIs in a try except block. Which means uh, my AGI can uh, throw exceptions, it can crash, it can do anything. But in my accept, I catch everything. And the, the send trace method I have is actually very useful because I can, using the inspect module, I can go back and uh, get the, uh, the, the, the backtrace, actually, the, all the methods that were called. 
and which files, which line, uh, exactly where was the error. I just have to send an email with this, and as soon as it crashes, I know it. So that's, that's a very good way to do it, actually. And that's it. Uh, are there any questions?